I've been watching that cassette of the Super Bowl for a week. You know where the TV cameras spend most of their time? On oh, those girls. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. It's incredible. Two best teams in the country going head to head on the field. The TV cameras are panning the sidelines. Oh. Those girls are the hottest thing around. Every guy's secret fantasy. How much lead time do we need for a cover? Well, we always need three months. You've got two. I want them for the September cover story. Since when are we putting out a cheap cheesecake magazine? We're not. But even a good, serious magazine has to pay the bills. Now you're caving into those clowns in the front office. Those clowns in the front office sign your paycheck and mine. They want more circulation, and I'm going to give it to them. Besides, it's not just sex. There's a story there, and I can smell it. Do you have an angle? I've been thinking about it. Behind the scenes with the most gorgeous girls in America. Spence, you want to be smart? Laura's the one to write this. Over my dead body. I want to talk to her again. Much less lay a hot assignment like this in her lap. Oh, no, no, no. This is very special to me. I'm going to write it myself. Janie, give me a round-trip ticket to Dallas, out tonight, and back tomorrow. a lot of pretty girls here, but I, I sure never figured on this many. Me neither. Hey, come on, kids, relax, or you won't make it through the registration, let alone the tryouts. I can't help it. I'm so scared. I mean, just being here at Texas Stadium, even thinking about being a cheerleader. I, I know I'm not going to make it, but... Hey, now, what makes you two think you're not going to make it? Well, well, do you really think we got a chance? Definitely. <laughs> and I, I know, this is my third year trying out. Really? I made it to the finals last year. <laughs> right down to the final cup. There we were, all 53 of us, dancing our little hearts out. I mean, I was smiling so much, I thought my face was going to crack. <laughs> and there I was, 
doing the Saturday night stomp. Those judges all eyeing me. I mean, I thought for sure I'd made it. And uh, then they um, called out the final numbers, and little Kim Everly, she just wasn't there. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, don't be. My boyfriend was so proud of me. I mean, he told all his friends that his girlfriend almost made the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. He treated me like a real little princess, he did. Wow, and here you are going through all this all over again just for him. Are you kidding? That heel? Well, why are you doing it then? I don't know. I guess it's the closest I'll ever come to any real glamour. Ready for another season? Yeah. I'm glad you are, because I'm not. Oh, come on, Tex. Do you remember the way it used to be, eight girls going out to the Sunday games? Well, who would have ever thought that it would have gotten to be this large? It's amazing, isn't it? It sure is. Oh. There are a lot of them. The ladies, could I have your attention, please? If you'll form a single line, we're going to be able to get you out a whole lot faster. How about that? Huh? All right, now, when you get back up to the registration desk, you're going to be receiving three pieces of paper when you turn in your letters. A copy of the rules and the regulations, the application, and a fact sheet telling you all you have to know about the preliminaries. Now, you're to fill out that application in full and bring it back with you to the preliminaries. Thank you for your patience. Uh, Miss Mitchell? Suzanne Mitchell? Yes. My name is Lyman Spencer. I've been trying to reach you. I called you from New York. Oh, yes, yes. I got your message. Mr. Todd in the press office talked with you. Yes, yes, I got his message, too. But I, I wanted to come down here and talk to you in person about the article um, we... Uh, Mr. Spencer, uh, it's a company policy. We don't accredit journalists to do articles on the cheerleaders without a detailed outline of what's going to be in that article. I think... You call it your angle. I have the feeling you know we call it an angle. I think you've made a wasted trip, Mr. Spencer. Well, now, wait a minute. You haven't heard what I have to say. Look, the, the article's going to be truthful, upbeat, glamorous. It's going to be... And in writing. Fine, all right. Mr. Spencer, I'm sure you have some marvelous arguments and a great deal of charm that you're prepared to use on me, but you're wasting your time. Well... Look at it our way. We haven't had too much success in some magazines. Now, when the pitch is on, it sounds absolutely marvelous. And then when it comes out, it turns out to be an unrecognizable jumble of distortions and sometime outright lies. Now, I am not prepared to let anybody do any more hatchet jobs on my girls. I don't have that kind of magazine, Miss Mitchell. We do not do hatchet jobs. No, I realize that. Just put it in writing. All right, OK, that's fine. Let's just say that, say that I put it in writing. How much time are we talking about? Well, you get it to Mr. Todd's office, and if he okays it, he sends it to my office. My assistant reads it, she okays it, she sends it to me. And if I okay it, I send it on to Mr. Schramm. We're, uh, talking about a couple of months, huh? At least. Then we'll have to discuss it. Another couple of months? Maybe. Okay, Miss Mitchell. I get the picture. I knew you would. Have a nice trip back to New York, Mr. Spencer. It's been nice meeting you. And naturally, now that the big design houses in Paris are turning more and more Come toward... Come on, let's just mealy-mouth business talk. Now, you're a hot young designer, and what you say makes news. Now, I want a really tough quote to lead off the article. And get every designer in Paris mad at me. They're mad at you already. I mean, you're far too successful to have any designer friends. Laura? They told me I'd find you in here. You look great. Well, then why should that surprise me? You always look great. You're interrupting a very important interview, Mr. Spencer. Uh, come on, now. You can't still be angry about it. Can all I? Of and why am I cutting out lunches, saving up enough money to have a contract put out on you? <laughs> All right, okay. So you're a little sore. That's not going to stop me. We have to talk. No, we have nothing to talk about. Oh, yes, we do. Excuse me. 
want to talk about you. That's your favorite subject. You still know how to hurt a guy. Ah, come on. Don't get feminine on me. I want to give you the biggest story of the year, Laura. I'm also going to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. I'm going to make you the hottest journalist in the business. Well, go on. I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Thought I'd get your attention. I really did mean it back there. You look sensational. Come on, Spence. And just save the line. It just doesn't get to me anymore. Oh, really? Could have fooled me. Look, you're handsome, you're charming, very bright, and sometimes a lot of fun. But you're also like the measles. When you've had it once, you're immune. Okay, for now. But someday, you're gonna have to convince me that you really mean it. Did you ever see the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders? Who hasn't? They're everywhere. Did I detect a note of quasi-intellectual disapproval? Quasi-intellectual? No, no, no. Don't fight it. Make it work for the story. Well, what story? You haven't told me. The girls. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. And that is the biggest story of my career? <sighs> oh, come on, Spence. I mean, you've got to be kidding. They happen to be the hottest thing in the country. They've, uh, they've hit some kind of nerve. Women from coast to coast are looking up to them. All that goody-goody look, but don't touch nonsense. I want to cut through all that, that phony PR and show those girls for what they really are. And you know why? Because I'm in the news business. My readers have a right to know the truth, and that's what I'm going to give them. If you had any pride as a journalist, you, you'd be dying to help me get this story. No. You're not going to talk me into anything anymore. <laughs> Truth, pride, my duty as a journalist. Why didn't you say what it really is? I mean, your circulation is falling off, and you're in trouble. The great Lyman Spencer, one step away from the unemployment line. Don't you think I know you'd have to be desperate before you try to con me into writing a story for you? It's not a con. All right, I, I know you're bitter now, but... We meant a lot to each other once, right? We never meant anything to each other. We were just both in love with you once, that's all. All right, you want to talk truth? Let's talk truth. I need you for this one, Laura. How much is it going to cost me? I'm much too expensive for you now. Really? What'd you get for your last article? 10,000? 12? My last was 15. Get out of here. You never made $15,000 for an article in your life. It's all right, doesn't matter. I'll double it. You got 30. I don't believe I'm saying this, but uh, what do you want me to do? I want you to get the inside story, behind the scenes. I want you to make the squad, become one of the cheerleaders, and then just tell her like it is. With all the gory, sensationalized details. Well, my readers are strong. They can take it. All right. You got a deal. Oh, that's great. That is great. I'm going to go back to the office and put it in writing. Oh, you don't have to. Fifteen. Get out of here. You never made $15,000 for an article in your life. It's all right. doesn't matter. I'll double it. You got 30. It's not that I don't trust you, Spence. You're the best. Morning, honey. Morning. You, uh, still thinking about Dallas? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still thinking. Betty? I really want you to go up there and make that cheerleader squad. Oh, J.R., I, I know it sounds like it's going to be a whole lot of fun and, and real exciting and all that, but I just don't think No that buts. I want you to do it as a favor to me. Being married to good old J.R. Denton hadn't been the barrel of laughs I promised you'd be. I'm happy, J.R. Maybe. I am. Okay, maybe you are. And I got to tell you, there's no guy happier in Tyler, Texas than me. I can see the stirrings. You looking kind of wistful at all those fashion magazines and the travel section in the Sunday papers. 
I can see you thinking all the time. Maybe wondering how it'd be if you weren't stuck away down here with a guy you've been going with since we were both in the 10th grade. That's not true. It's just that I... I don't want to ever be anywhere without you. Hey, just because you could be going up to Dallas and be having some fun, I don't mean you're getting rid of me that easy. We'll see each other every chance we can. I'll be up sometimes during the week, and I'll be at every game. Ah, oh, JR, I haven't even made the squad yet. You will. You're just so pretty. When it's all over in a year or two, you'll have something to look back on and remember. Then you won't be like your mother and mine and all the other women around here. Old before their time. Spending their days thinking about all the life they could have had. Things would have been a little different. And there you are. Enjoy your breakfast. Thank you all. Mrs. Loomis. Yeah. I was wondering maybe when breakfast is over, could I have a couple of hours off? You're going to those cheerleader trials, aren't you? Well, if you'll give me the time off, yes, ma'am. Jesse, I've been meaning to talk to you. Yes? Yesterday, after you took off the other day, uh -huh. a man came by looking for you, asking questions. Oh? Yeah, like where you were living, what time you were coming back here. A lot of questions. Was he a big guy with dark hair, about 25? What'd you tell him? A whole lot of nothing. Well, first off, I told him I didn't know where you lived. And you hadn't been here for over a month, and I didn't ever expect to see you around here again. Because you left here owing me a week's salary I was dumb enough to pay you in advance. <laughs> oh, I didn't like his looks. <laughs> Reminded me of my third husband, and I told you what a loser he was. Well, do you think it's still okay for me to work here? Sure. After what I told him, he'll be looking for you in ten other places. <laughs> Jesse, if I was you, I'd think twice about trying out for that cheerleader squad. They get the pictures in the paper an awful lot. I know. I've been thinking about that, but I've just been dreaming about it for so long. Well, sometimes you have to let go of a dream. Oh, it seems like I've been doing that all my life. You're sure this is what you really want to do? Even though you know that fellow's looking for you? Okay, you can take off. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Loomis. Oh, you don't have to thank me. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing you any real favor. The best thing that could happen to you is that you don't even make the finals. No. All right, I'm going to leave this right up here on the blackboard, and we'll get back to it after lunch. Class dismissed. If you want to run over to the stadium and take a look at the competition. Oh, no thanks. I don't think I could stand it. Joanne, there is nothing to worry about. There's just no girl trying out today that's anywhere near pretty enough to knock you off that squad. I guarantee it. Thanks, Mary Lou. I'm still taking that lunch period for you, so you can get out of here and relax for a half hour. <laughs> you got it. I don't think my egg salad sandwich is gonna survive. Gee, I really didn't mean to step on it. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was watching the ball, too. Good kick, but not enough hang time. Now, you could have run it back for 100 yards or more. <laughs> and I've seen you do just that, too. Against Arkansas in the Cotton Bowl. Mm-hmm. You know, after all these years, I still remember every foot of that 100 yards. Oh, it wasn't that long ago. Try a lifetime. I guess I better go. Sorry about your sandwich. It's all right.
twice as many trying out as there were last year. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Hi, Hi Joanne. Just couldn't stay away. Oh, I really tried, but I guess it's morbid curiosity. I had to see for myself how many really pretty ones there are. Just like the rest of us. Sure are a lot of pretty girls in Texas. What part of the state do you come from? Jacksonville, Florida. Where everyone's just dying to be a cheerleader <laughs> in Dallas? Not everyone, but little Jenny here is. Why? I mean, what's so special about being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader? I was Miss Florida in the Miss International contest last year. Finished second runner-up, too. Uh, sorry, I missed that. Everyone missed it. But not this time. Once I'm a cheerleader, I'll build these big TV close-ups during the games, and all the other publicity. Then it's off to Hollywood in a blaze of glory. It's happened before. Hmm. Hey, <laughs> you know, you've got a chance to make the team do. Oh, thanks. And in as much as we're both going to have to relocate to Dallas, why don't we get an apartment together and split expenses? That sounds like a great idea. Come on, kid, relax a little. Well, I'm trying, but I'm so scared. I, I can't hardly breathe. Just give it another try. It's going to be hard making that team without breathing. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm Ron Chapman with KBIL Radio, and on behalf of the entire Dallas Cowboy organization, we thank you for taking time to participate in these auditions for the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Before we go any farther, I'd like you to meet the judging panel with whom you will be working today. Uh, on the far end of the table, prominent Dallas attorney, W.W. W. Mitchell. Right at my right is the man that, this is his office. He is the uh, vice president in charge of the entire Texas Stadium Corporation. This is Bert Rose. To my left, the lady we have to call the house mother of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. This is Suzanne Mitchell. She calls all the shots, and the girl who calls the dance steps is on the far end of the table, our choreographer, Texie Waterman. Now, first thing we'll do this afternoon is ask you to come up here in groups of four. Come up in front of the judges' table. We'll ask you for your name and where you're from, a little about yourself. We'll start with the first four from right over here, please. Oh, rookies, that's all. Let's wait and see their moves at final cut time. Hello, ma'am. My name is Jesse Matthews, and I'm from right here in Dallas. Are you working at something now, Jesse? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm a waitress. That's very good. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Betty Denton. I'm from Tyler, Texas. I don't do too much of anything, really. I'm a housewife. Hello, my name is Ginny O'Neill. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, where I'm a model. Hi, Miss Mitchell. I'm Kim Everly. Hello, Kim. My name's Laura Coleman. I called you this morning from the airport. Oh, yes, of course. I'm a secretary in New York. You're a long way from home. Well, most New Yorkers feel that way even in New Jersey. There are a couple real beauties down there. But nowhere near the winners we are, right? Right. Hey, we're all going to make the squad again. Well, I sure hope so. No hoping about it. We're a winning team. Me and that's it. We left out anyone's favorite? No, not for me. That's good for me. Okay, let's go. All right, girls. The judges have made their decisions. We have our semi-finalists. Now, let me point out that if your number comes up on the blackboard, we want you to come back here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock sharp. Conversely, if your number is not on the blackboard, we hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been some kind of fun for you. And we thank you very, very much on behalf of the Cowboy Organization for your interest and your participation.
I'll tell you, we both made it. Now, we're going to do a little celebrating tonight, and I know just the place. I hope you got a real knockout outfit. Yeah, I have brought along a head turner or two. Why? I heard about a disco place the cheerleaders go sometimes. We're going to go there tonight and throw some real fear into them. No, that's what I like. A fully developed killer instinct. Developed nothing. I was born with it. Carl Jessup. I have an appointment to see Gil Brandt. Yes, he's expecting you. Just right through that door. Thank you. Good morning. Well, hello, Joanne. I was just dropping my uniform off. I wanted to wait around and say hello. How nice. Come in. Hello, Gil. Kyle. Hey, you're looking great. Hey, you too. I guess those are all the registrations for the new girls. Mm -hmm. And I guess I may be wrong for putting you on the spot for even asking, but do you think I have a chance of making the squad again? But I haven't lost it. I can still do the job. I'm betting on it. That's why I arranged for that tryout. Kyle, we go too far back together for me to kid you. Good, because I'm not just another over-the-hill running back scrambling to hang on for one more season. I can help this team, and that's why I don't mind going out there on an open tryout. I just want to be sure you're taking me seriously, that's all. But every year, it just seems as if there are more and more new girls trying out. They're all so young and pretty. You have the same chance as all the other girls. Yes, I know. But these last four years, well, they've been just the best four years of my life. I just don't know how I'm going to be able to stand it if I'm not part of it anymore. You show us something in that tryout, and you're going to be busy Sundays running back kicks for the Dallas Cowboys. Sure gonna beat having a payment way in the Texas Stadium. Thanks, Gil. See you. You bet. Come on. Come on, get out of here. Go back to work. What are you doing, playing hooky? No. <laughs> <laughs> out you go. I'll see you at the finals, huh? And, uh, lay off the french fries. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Oh, hello. We do keep running into each other, don't we? Uh, hey, look, uh... Joanne. Look, Joanne, uh, if you don't have a boyfriend or husband who'd object, I sure would like to make up for squishing your egg salad sandwich at the park. Oh. As a matter of fact, I can do better than that. How about dinner tonight? Oh, uh, well, I did have some plans. Plans you can change? Sure, why not? Great. I'll see you out. tired just watching. Besides, I think I'd just rather sit here and be with you. I was thinking, what if you make the cowboys and I make the cheerleaders? You know the rules. I sure do. Well, that happens, we won't be able to see each other anymore. Let me tell you a story. When I was playing at Texas, we had Notre Dame on the schedule one year. Some of the guys got really uptight about it. Finally, the coach brought us in the locker room and said, hey, guys. Don't worry about it till time comes. What happened? We all stopped worrying and Notre Dame killed us. <laughs> anyway, we both are gonna make the team and we'll worry about it when the time comes. Okay. Hey, there's table. Hi, girls. 
long it be? What do people drink here in Dallas? Scotch, bourbon, gin. Same thing you Yankees drink. Uh, scotch and water. You love too? Where are you girls from? I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Laura here is from New York City. We're here to try out for the cheerleaders. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, fellas. Hi. Want to help us shake away some of our jet lag? Sure. <laughs> Too bad. Bad? I'm afraid they're great. You've got to be crazy coming down here like this. Ah, don't worry. I won't blow your cover. Come on, sit down. What are you doing here? I mean, what do you want? Just came down to see you. I missed you. Oh, come on, Spence. Serious. Maybe I am. Listen, Spence, I'm here on assignment, and you're the editor. Business, remember? Yes, I remember, but then after seeing you again, I, uh... I really have missed you. I don't believe you. You do anything to make sure I deliver that story. I've been thinking about it, Laura. Maybe we gave up on us too soon. And uh, all of this has nothing to do with the story? No, not this. Not the way I feel about you. But I am here on business. OK, business first. We'll uh, table the rest of it until all this is over. OK. Uh, are those all real live cheerleaders? Most of them. I heard this is the place they come to. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. Came down to apply a little pressure. How's the story coming? There's a lot of sanctimonious goody-goody ridges. Little old gals from Dallas junk being tossed around. But if the real cheerleaders are anything like my new roommate, Ginny O'Neill, the girl in the print dress, female piranha. Just making a quick pit stop here in Dallas before blasting open the gates to Hollywood. I knew they were all here hyping something. I can't wait for you to make that squad. We're gonna really blow this thing wide open. And we're gonna do it a month earlier than we figured. That's the pressure part. I moved the story up. You're in the next issue. But that's impossible. If we don't jump circulation with the next issue, then I'm out on my ear and you don't get your 30,000 bucks. You want to tell me what's impossible? Spence, for a guy who's romancing me, you sure have a way with words. What are you doing? Studying. Studying what? About the cowboys. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know what year it was I first went to the Super Bowl, would you? What do you have to know that for? I made it to the semifinals. 
Really? Uh-huh, and this is all part of the finals tomorrow. They're having a test to see how much you know about football and the Cowboys organization. And I'm going to know just as much as I possibly can. <laughs> I really got to admire you, Jesse. Me? Yeah, you. I know a little about where you're coming from. The orphanage, all those foster homes, that fellow following you, whoever he is. And you're not going to let any of that stand in the way of what you really want. And I know you've been dreaming about this a long time. And it does look like it could kind of be fun. But it's not just the fun and excitement you're after with those cheerleaders, is it? Well, it could be a little more than that, yeah. If I tell you, you're probably going to laugh. I promise. No laugh. Well, after a while, it gets so they beat you down so bad, you start to feel like nothing. Really, nothing. But all that is behind me now. And I'm tired of feeling like I don't matter anymore. That's why the cheerleaders is so important to me. If I could just make it, if an organization like the Dallas Cowboys could say that I'm good enough to represent them, well, then I can't feel like I'm nothing anymore, can I? Now that's what I call much too good for those folks up in Dallas. You like it? What there is of it, <laughs> sure. I bought it for the finals. I figured if I'm going to go up there anyway, I just might as well show them what a Tyler girl is really like. <laughs> you know, I guess this is just about the happiest I've seen you look in quite a while. Aren't you? I got to admit it. It really is getting exciting. And it's going to be a lot more exciting once you make that squad. You'll see, honey. You're really going to have some fun for a change. Oh. Hello, ma'am. My name is Jesse Matthews. Jesse Matthews. Yes, ma'am. Right here, number 12. Now, you just take this and go get your picture taken over there and then find your seat. Thank you, ma'am. Michelle Vaughn. Hi. How you doing? Fine, thank you. Stand on the tape for us. Yes, sir. Shall I put this down? Put the purse down. Thank you. Turn your right shoulder away. Uh-huh. Big smile. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, do just what she did. Hi, Lori Murdoch. Thank you. That's it. Now look, right in the camera. Thank you. Number 38. Okay. Good number. Thank you. Good morning, Mary Jo. Morning, Joanne. Okay, Joanne, you're number 36. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Michael Baker. Kim Apple, thank you. Remember me from last year? Okay, Kim, you're number three. Just go right on over there. Have a picture taken. Thank you. Okay. Oh, hi, Joanne. How you doing? Good to see you again. Look right in here. Thank you. Thank you. I I'm Betty Denton. Okay, Betty. Stop to breathe until after Super Bowl. All right, girls. Good morning. Welcome back. This
This is it. The first thing we're going to ask you to do today is to come up here in groups of six and show us some of your best disco moves. We'll ask, obviously, for numbers one through six. Stay right where you are, numbers 1 through 25, because Texie Waterman will teach you a new dance routine. This is to see how rapidly you pick up on new steps. Numbers 26 through 50, we want you to take a written multiple part test. Now this is going to be to see your general knowledge of football and how much you know about the cowboy organization. And the third group, everyone from 50 on, down in this area where Suzanne Mitchell will interview each of you. Okay, girls, let me have numbers one through ten. And two lines, please. Quickly. Bounce. Sit. Take a deep breath. And let it all out. How do you feel? <laughs> okay. Now then, I want you to take your right foot, tap out, roll that hip, Okay, ladies, please take a pencil, pull the form out. When it's completed, return it to the desk. Please take a pencil, return this to the desk when you've completed it. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Now, what am I going to ask you? I don't know. <laughs> How are the kids in school? Oh, yeah. they're doing fine. Out. In. Out. All right, let's take it with the left foot. Ready? And tap. Out. In. Well, Von Seal, I know you so well, too, that I don't know what to ask you. So we better let the uh, new girls have a chance. Thank you. Oh, I've given you two, and you give her one. Out. Okay. I'll go out. I want your head looking to your right. Tap. Out. In. Up. And drop. Tap. Out. In. Up. Hold it right there. Brush. Up. Lunge out. And push. And push. Out and up. Out and up. Out and up. Pick up and push, push. Okay, girls, let's take it with music. Ready? 
Ron? girl like you want to be a cheerleader in Dallas? I don't know. It seems like a lot of fun. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be long, hard hours of practice every night and on every weekend. Well, if that's what it takes to be the best, that's exactly what it takes. Well, then I don't mind, because that's what I want to be, the best. All right. Thank you. And you've had uh, four years of acting lessons. You know, there's not too much chance for an acting career here in Dallas. All I want here in Dallas is a chance to be on the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. All right. Thank you. All right, can you take your seats, please? Thank you. Your work is largely done now, and ours is just beginning. We're going to retire now and tally sheets and so forth, and there'll be some refreshments here while we're gone. We'll get back as soon as we can and announce who the winners are. Tension's so thick here, you could cut it with a knife. Oh, you could say that again. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's really important to you, isn't it, that you make it to the squad? Oh, it's just the most important thing in the whole world, that's all. Yeah. I'll be really disappointed if I don't get in. Oh, I, I just have to make the cheerleaders, that's all. I, I just have to. Well, good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm practicing my dance routines. Oh, you're going to do all right, I think. Right. Yeah. I bet she makes it time. How can you eat? You're not nervous? Mm. Dig in, it's great spread. Oh, I can't. It's like waiting for brain surgery or something. <laughs> sure, a lot of uptight girls walking around here. Mm, really? I mean, they really are. Judges have reached their decision, and if you'll all take your places, we'll announce who the winners are. This is it. We've been arguing in the back room, but now I'm going to call out 32 names of the new Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. I'll call the name and the number. Come on up when I do, okay? All right. The winners are... Number seven, Gay Terrell. <laughs> Number five, Ann Briggs. Number 12, Jesse Matthews. Number 14, Von Seal Baker. Number 20, Tina Hernandez. Number 19, Kim Kilway. Number 29, Jeannie Cabot. Number 22, Laurie Murdoch. Number 26, Debbie Brooks. Number 25, Robin Sindor. Number 44, Angel Bland. Number 39, Debbie White. Number 40, Suzette Russell. Number 33, Vanessa Baker. Number 50, Shannon Baker. Number 47, Michelle Vaughn. Number 4, Susan Jones. 
number two, Lauren Moss. Number 13, Pam Davis. Number 11, Denise Doran. Number 21, Susan Lolly. Number 30, Tammy Roberts. Number 17, Sherry Worthington. Number 28, Debbie Wagner. Number 36, Joanne Vale. Number 30, Connie Dolan. Number 9, Jeannie McKelvey. Number 49, Micheline Austin. Number 34, Terry Richardson. Number 23, Cindy Sykes. Number 18, Christy Matthews. Number 42, Jill Wagner. Number 10, Laura Coleman. Number 41, Benita Briggs. Number 31, Betty Denton. Number 27, Tammy Barber. Number 45, Kim McKinney. And number one, Suzette Schultz. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. going on here? I've lost contests before, but I've been in so many of them that I'm an expert at rating the opposition. And there are no two ways about it. I'm the prettiest girl here. Yes, Ginny, you're a very pretty girl. And there's nothing wrong with my dancing, either. No, there isn't. You're almost a pro. Then why? Well, I'm afraid I'm the reason. There's a little too much showbiz in your bio. Oh, I get it now. No career-minded Sharpies on the chair. Something like that? So what? Just means I'm off to Hollywood six months sooner. That's all. <laughs> to congratulate you on behalf of the Dallas Cowboys organization. Now, you all have a unique responsibility, and it's up to every one of you to live up to it. You were given a copy of the rules and the regulations when you registered, and we expect you to adhere to those. 
First of all, you must live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You must have a regular job or be going to school. There will be rehearsals every night of the week and on weekends. If you miss one rehearsal prior to a home game, you're not going to be allowed to be in that game. You miss two rehearsals and you're not going to be a cheerleader. Two games and you're out. Okay? All right. Now, you're going to be taking care of your own uniforms. You new girls will be fit next week. Your returning girls will get the same ones back that you've had last year, and they'd better fit. <laughs> now, there's something that I want you to remember and you must never forget. When you're in those uniforms, you are representing the Dallas Cowboys organization. You have a duty to do it well and keep our image. Okay, one thing I want you to be aware of. I promise to be your very best friend. I can also be your worst enemy. So work hard, huh? Okay. Let's get to work. Let's do okay, it. Okay, girls. Up. Four lines, please. Which leg? Right foot, point out. Step across and brush the foot up. Step out and fall back. When you fall back, flip those hands up. Push back as the elbow comes back. Hip comes up. And push and flick the hand up. Slap and move. That's it. All right, ready? Let's try it. One out. And step across. Brush up. Step, fall back. And push, push, up, and slap. And let's try it again. Ready? And, and step, brush up. Step, fall back. Push, push. Again, one out, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Again, one out, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Quick fast. All right, now, Betty, when you kick up, I want that toe pointed. Oh, yes. All right, point out again. Let's go. I am wiped out. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Call you other guy. Oh, sure. Here we go. Here you go. Thank you. Sure. Laura, you sure it isn't any bother? Bother? You're doing me a big favor. I took on that apartment figuring I'd share it with Ginny O'Neill. She didn't make it through the finals, so now I'm stuck with the place that's bigger than I need. Yes, sir. What's your name? Chris. Jonathan. Well, uh, I do need a place to live in Dallas. Well, then, that's settled. Thank you. You're moving in with me. Thanks a lot. Oh, Laura. <laughs> I mean, you know I can't afford very much. Besides, you haven't even told me how much my share of the rent's going to be. Look, don't worry about it. We'll work it all out. The main thing is that we get to be friends and we get to know all about each other. You know, like uh, in a sorority house, all the girls sitting around telling about themselves? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have very much to tell. You'd be surprised. Jesse, I've been looking all over for you. Now look what a celebrity you are. Picture in the paper and everything. Now, Frank, you just leave me alone. Jesse, 
Oh, Jesse, after all we've been through together, how can I leave you alone? Hello, Jesse. Everything all right? Yeah, sure. Jesse and me are just old friends. Stop by to say hello. And to congratulate you on being picked for the cheerleaders. I'll see you, Jesse. Is there anything you want to tell me? No, ma'am. Jesse, if he's bothering you, if anybody bothers you, I want you to come to me. Do you understand? Thank you, Miss Mitchell. Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. Part of the ERA. The what? Oh, the Equal Rights Amendment. Oh, I, I guess I should know all about that, but I, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> but you do know all about the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Oh, I, I know that doesn't sound too smart to a New York City girl like you. <laughs> I guess I'm just a, a simple Texas housewife, that's all. Well, all that's going to change. You're in Dallas now. You're going to have to get out there and see a whole lot more of the world. Hi, Spence. Well, nothing startling yet. So far, just a go get him speech from the Iron Butterfly who's in charge. And a really bone-crushing four-hour rehearsal. First of what I fear is going to be many. I've uh, roped in one of the cheerleaders into sharing the apartment with me. So far, all I've gotten from her is enough sugar and molasses to kill four diabetics. Hello. Mr. Lyman Spencer? You got him. My name is Frank Rand. I'm calling from down here in Dallas. And I heard that you might be willing to pay for some dirt on the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Where'd you hear something like that? Uh, from a friend of mine. You spread word around pretty good when you were down here. Now, uh, how much money are we talking? That depends on what you got to sell. I've got a girl who just made the cheerleader squad. Special pictures, inside dirt. You, you just name it and you got it. Naturally, providing the price is right. Naturally. And if there's no inside dirt? Oh, you just write up anything you want. I'll get her to swear it's all true, every word of it. Mr. Rand, I think you just made yourself a deal. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Kyle. You're a mighty tough lady to reach. I've been calling a lot. Well, you know how practice is. We seem to be at it all the time. I've left messages. You too busy to make a phone call? Kyle, I've been thinking, and, well, I just don't want to see you anymore. I didn't make the Cowboys. You know that. Yes, I know. Then you're going to have to tell me the reason why you won't see me. Please, Kyle. I just don't want to. Isn't that enough? No, it isn't. There's got to be a reason, and I want to know what it is. I'm not moving until I get my answer. All right. I'll see you tonight after rehearsal. I'll tell you then. Tonight. Well, it's not too hard to take. What's my wife? Mm. I guess we'd better start looking for jobs. Either that or we're going to have to face up to Suzanne and tell her why we're not working. <laughs> well, quick, where's that what ad section? <laughs> what can you do? Oh, I don't know. Not too much of anything, I guess. Do you type? Well, just a little. Well, you don't have to worry about it. You've got the legs of a great secretary. Oh, well, thank you. Well, Laura, do, do you really think I could get a job in an office? 
I guarantee it. Oh, I sure hope so. Betty, I hope you don't mind me asking this, but what are you doing here? You love your husband, and it sounds as if he loves you too. I mean, shouldn't you be back home in Thailand making babies? Oh, well, JR says there's plenty of time for that. What else does JR say? Well, I, I guess you must have figured by now it, it isn't my idea being on the cheerleaders. It's just that JR wants it so bad for me. For you? Well, it's a lot for JR, too. Why? I mean, what's so important about all this? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he, uh, maybe he feels it'll make him stand a little taller with some of his friends, you know, and, and, and all the people he does business with. <sighs> Sounds just like a lot of macho garbage to me. Oh, no, Laura, no, it isn't. No, he wants it for me, too. He wants me to, to have some fun and, and, and meet new people, maybe have some exciting times, you know. Well, Betty, that's just exactly what you're going to be doing for the next year. Going out, having some fun, meeting a lot of attractive young men. And aren't you a little afraid of the wear and tear that's going to put on your marriage? No, I'm not just a little afraid. I'm terrified. Hello, Jesse. I've been waiting for you. Frank, you've just got to leave me alone. You don't have to do anything. Come on, Jesse. I just want to talk. Frank, I'm going to be late for rehearsal. Oh, come on, Jesse. We're just going to talk. And will you let me go? Sure. If that's what you really want. Sure is good to see you again, Jesse. Frank, that is not what you came here to talk to me about. You know, Jesse, things haven't been going too good for me lately. I had a couple of deals I thought might happen, but they just kind of blew apart at the last minute. <laughs> what else is new? Well, I figure I used up all my luck here in Dallas. Maybe I'll head to L.A., Vegas. That's why I started looking for you. See if you want to come along with me. And then here you are, big shot Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Frank, my being a cheerleader has nothing to do with you. Yeah, sure. Frank, what are you thinking of doing? Me? Nothing. You're the one who's going to do it for us. I'm not doing nothing. Oh, yes, you are. Frank! 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 Now, first, you're going to get some pictures taken. You're going to be the only topless, bottomless Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. We're going to make a fortune. Frank, I'm not going to do any of it. Okay. All right, have it your own way. But then, me being a loyal Dallas Cowboy fan, I'm going to have to tell them all about you, all about us. Oh, Frank. Frank, please don't do this to me. You either do what I want, or I'm going to tell them everything. Either way, you're off the cheerleader, so let's at least make some money. is just around the corner and you're still looking at your toes. Now, Joanne and Jesse, I don't know where your minds are, but I sure wish they were back here telling your feet what to do. <laughs> oh, come on, ladies, that's not funny. It really isn't. In one week's time, we walk out in the middle of Texas Stadium to make complete fools out of ourselves. Now, let's be serious and smile and sell. Now, come on, let's go. One, two, three, four.
evening, ma'am. I'm looking for Mrs. Betty Denton. This is the place. I'm Laura Coleman. And you just have to be J.R. Well, that's right. Glad to meet you, ma'am. This sure is a fancy place. J.R. Oh! oh! I'm just so glad to see you. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just going to get dressed and get out of here. I know it sounds crazy, but after practicing dancing for four hours every single night, we come home and we rush right out again to do some more dancing. <laughs> You're not rushing anywhere tonight. You and J.R. just stick around and get reacquainted. And that sounds like a real nice idea. Oh, come on, J.R. There's this really cute little disco all us cheerleaders go to. You'll just love it. It's real nice. Besides, we got plenty of time to get reacquainted later on. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, let me just get ready, okay? Okay. Up there, there's Connie and Kim and Susan. This is my husband, JR. Hi, Betty. How about a dance? Sure. Okay. Excuse me, Kristen. Joanne, it just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, it's the way I feel. What kind of answer is that? I can't help myself. Kyle, I do like you. And I know we have fun together. But fun? Look, I know it's only been a couple of weeks. But Joanne, I love you. I'm not some kind of glamorous jock anymore. Oh, no, it's not that. Look, football has given me a good college education. I've made some good investments. I can take care of you. It's not that either. Well, then what is it? I can't help myself. Kyle, I want so badly to keep on being on the cheerleaders. And every time I think of you... I get it. I didn't make the Cowboys. So I'm a constant reminder of what it's going to be like for you next year or the year after when you don't make the team. I thought I knew you better than that. How can you be so shallow? I know it sounds shallow, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just scared. Scared of what? Maybe just getting old. JR, I was just thinking, I'm just not going to listen to you anymore. Well, being on the cheerleaders is great and all, and, and I love it. I do. But that doesn't mean I got to live here in Dallas. I'm going to call Suzanne first thing in the morning. And maybe she'll let me live at home in Tyler. And that way I could just drive back and forth for the rehearsals and the games. But that'd be 100 miles of driving each way. I figure you're worth it. Woo! Oh, you can oh. oh. Now, come on. Let's get out of here and get reacquainted. <laughs>
It's good and strong. Well, how about a martini? That sounds fine, thank you. Hey, I thought you didn't drink. Well, that was yesterday. Thank you. Today, it seems like a fine idea. What's wrong? Is there anything that I could do? Uh, well, I don't know. You promise you won't tell anybody? I promise. Well, you see, there's this fellow Frank that I know, and ever since I've been one of the cheerleaders, he's been... From the oh. gentleman? Jesse, I'll be right back. What are you doing here, Spence? You said you weren't coming back. I did. But you said to keep it all business. Table the personal end for now. Listen, Spence, I've been thinking, and maybe we're on the wrong track. I mean, we came out here to do a whole big expose on the red-hot media hype of the year. Well, I've been really into it. And there just is no story. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders are everything that their PR says they are. They're just a lot of nice, down-home girls having some fun. And as far as... As far as they're concerned, they're no nationwide phenomenon. They're just themselves. I've really gotten to you, haven't I? I guess so. I've even made some friends. Please, you have me in tears. Believe me, Spence, there is no story. Please, for me, let it lie. No. I told you I was going to blast all this goody-goody girl next door, Con, and I'm going to do it. It's going to be expensive, Bob, but worth every penny. Good pictures, a signed byline by one of your cheerleader pals. It's your last chance to be a star. I'm going to do the story with you or without you. You take your choice. Okay, girls. Oh, Suzanne, would you like to say something to the girls? Oh, it looks good. It's really coming along. Your uh, uniforms are over here. They're all tagged with your names. Oh, I do have a question. Does anybody know where Jessie is or why she wasn't here tonight? Well, then, would someone please pick up her uniform, get it to her, and give her a message from me? If she misses one more rehearsal, she's out. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Hey, Laura, here's your house. Anyone seen Jessie's? Here it is. Oh, thanks. I'll take it to her. If you're in there, please open the door. Just a minute. Hey, I brought 
brought your uniform. Jesse, what's the matter? Now, where are you going? I don't know. I just know I have to go somewhere. I've been sitting here thinking about it for hours now, and I don't even know where to go. Oh, but you think you have to go anywhere? Well, it's Frank. I tried to tell you before. I just can't go through with what he wants. Well, what does he want you to do? He wants me to pose for some dirty pictures and then swear to some terrible lies about the cheerleaders for some magazine. <sighs> Spence. Well, I just gotta run. I can't pose for those pictures, and if I don't, then Frank's just gonna tell some terrible things about me. Lies? No. The truth. About how Frank and I ran away from one of those foster homes together, and and how we held up some gas stations, and how I went to reform school for it, and he went to prison. So, see, I'm just going to get kicked off the cheerleaders anyway. You must have been awfully young. Well, I was 15. Well, no one's going to hold that against you now. But Frank's never going to leave me alone, and that magazine's going to go ahead and print all those lies anyway. Maybe not. First of all, we're going to get you out of here. But Nora, I don't... There's no two ways about it. You're moving in with me. I insist. Now, come on. Well, then we're going to see about your friend, Jack. And my friend, Spence. things I have to talk to you about. All right. Uh, do you have a seat? No, thanks. I'll stand. I, uh, I may have to beat a hasty exit. Confession time. Well, I always find it best if you just start from the top. Well, first of all, I, I wasn't a secretary in New York. I'm a reporter. And I was sent down here to do a hatchet job on you and the cheerleaders from the inside. Well, aren't you going to throw me out of here? I might when you finish. Right now, I want to hear the rest of it. Well, for whatever reasons, I'm not going to do the story. Out of curiosity, why? I don't know. I've learned a lot about you and Texie and the other girls. Maybe even something about myself. And in any event, I'm not doing it. But my editor is still determined to have a sizzling front cover story, and he's not too particular about the truth. And that's where Jesse comes in. Jesse Matthews. He and some creep out of her past are pressuring her into doing some exploitation pictures and a byline story full of a whole lot of lies about the cheerleaders. And that's why Jessie didn't come to practice. She wouldn't do anything to hurt any of you. And she was ready to run away before I stopped her. I told her there was no need to run away. That you wouldn't hold anything that she did at age 15 against her. Age 15? Probably not, but I'd like to hear it first. Good. Well, if you're game, I think I have a way of getting these creeps off your back and Jessie's. How? Oh. Do you know any local cops? All right, now. Uh, why don't you move, move your legs over to the side there? Make them look really nice. That's it, that's it. Smile now, look sexy, all right? Good, Red. All right, Red. That's it, all right. One more like that. That's fine. Morning. Good. Now tell her to take off the vest. Jesse, take off your vest. Frank, please. Which one of you is Lyman Spencer? He is. Who are you? Beat it. Mr. Spencer, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take you into custody. Come on. What for? Article 3104 of the Texas Penal Code. Registering at a public inn for the purpose of conducting lewd and lascivious acts. Ah, uh, yes. 
I thought I smelled the frame. I did it just the way you wanted me to. You were perfect, Jesse. I don't suppose there's some kind of deal we could make? You know there's a deal we can make. Okay. You win. I'll kill the story. And you keep that man away from Jesse. Yeah, I'll hire two guys to break his legs if he even looks at it. Okay? Billy, what do you think? I guess the best way to handle it is just to go ahead and file the charges. That way, if it turns out he's not a man of his word, we can always get extradition papers and go up to New York City after him. I got it. I got it. Come on, you. How's that? You know something, Laura? I'm really sorry it didn't work out. I'll bet you are. I don't mean the story. There are other stories. I'm talking about us. Oh, that's just it, Spets. There is no us. I used to think there was. Even after we split up, I, I used to hope that someday maybe it'll work out. You know, you're pretty heady stuff when you turn on that charm. I guess coming down here, I I learned a lot about myself. You just don't get to me anymore. Remember, I told you, someday you're going to have to convince me that you really mean that. Believe it, Spence. It's true. season, so I thought I'd just stop by and wish you good luck. Oh, Kyle. I've been doing nothing but thinking about you these last couple days. Even though I'm terrified about not being a part of all this someday. I'm just not going to let it ruin things for me. Or for us. See you later. See you later. to bring this back. And I, uh, I just wanted to say goodbye before I head back east. It's been an experience, all right. Hi, Miss Mitchell. Kim Everly. Hi, Kim. OK, on your way. <laughs> we had to get a replacement for you for the season. Laura, I've been thinking. You've been through all the auditions and the rehearsals and a few extra traumas we didn't count on. So I think it's just fair that you go on with the rest of the girls in Texas Stadium just to see what it feels like. Really? You know the routine. Sure. Go on. Hey, that's great. All righty. Here we go. Gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboy Organization is proud to present the internationally famous Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. Yeah. 